Dear colleagues, thank you all uh, for being here. I'm Samer Mashru. I'm originally Persian from Iran. My, my bachelor's degree is in mining engineering. I got my master and PhD in petrology in 2015 from the University of Tehran. And I've worked uh, on the solidification of this steels and assaulted layered intrusion. From that time, <clears throat> I've started working as a postdoc for Wits University from 2017 until now. It's a pleasure to talk with you today about a long standing puzzle in igneous petrology. And that is in placement uh, sequence in construction of basaltic layered intrusion. I'm going to show you that how understanding of emplacement style and ore forming processes helps in deciphering the plumbing system of the layered matrix intrusion. Layered basaltic intrusion are the fossilized remnant of crustal mining chambers and host some, uh, some of Earth's largest known ore deposits. There are two ways of assessment of how different parts of the layered intrusion are related to each other. In sequence of um, upward um, deposition of cumulates versus non-sequential ceiling placement. Okay. Uh, the diagram on the left uh, represents the traditional concept of big magma tank. Advocates of this concept suggest that layered intrusions are formed by sequential injection of magma and stratification as an upwardly aggregates in crystal pile. They suggest that mass balance problem of chromatite offers support to this concept because they are under the impression that these chromatite, chromatites of the visual complex, are laterally continuous and extensive for many hundreds or thousands of kilometers. Right diagram is the non sequential seal emplacement concept. It shows that igneous bodies resulting from the amalgamation of seals in continental trust. There, there are growing body of evidence, I would say, in favor of this model, including field geochemical and particularly geochronological dating. Now let's discuss how understanding the emplacement style and all forming process of help in understanding the plumbing system of the layered intrusion. There would be a combination of possibility for the emplacement style given two known types of fluid that we deal with in the deep in earth, melt and mush. I will show that these events were happened in different compartments of both eastern and western limbs of the Bushford complex. This suggests that geochemical and field evidence of the emplacement of the Marenski units at the Royal Bafokin Platinum Mine is a compartment in Western League. And also the lower critical and upper critical zone boundary uh, at the Jaglas compartment of the Eastern Link. It both indicated of the intrusion of both marsh and melt into the marsh. And on the other hand, field evidence of the emplacement of the UG1 chromatite at Dwarf River uh, compartment in the eastern wing are indicative of the intrusion of magma uh, into melt. I will explain that combination of these emplacement style and construction of layered intrusion uh, are, are impossible in my view to be explained in the context of traditional magma peak tank of melt. For this purpose, draw attention to the Bushel complex. This is a uh, Rosenberg layered suit. Um, which is the maficulture mafic portion of the bushel complex and it's about nine kilometers. It is subdivided into lower zone, critical zone, main zone, and upper zone. And critical zone hosts a uh, well known economic PG during Marenskiri. Geographically, it is subdivided into northern and western and eastern limbs with different compartments, as you can see here. So uh, you can see Rosenberg Lipstick is composed of several isolated compartments. Uh, and it is an emerging concept that are backed by stratigraphic geochemical evidence and also mining operations. First of all, there are no strict stratigraphic correlation between different drift cores in different parts of the visual complex. And these compartments are also distinct in terms of geochemistry. You can see the old part in engine number here in different compartments. In the western link, uh, are different. 
Also, chemical variation in different compartments is also true for the Murensky roof and uh, in, in the northern sectors of the Western zone. This diagram is based on uh, the compartment concept by Mitchell 2019. And you can see postulated direction of intrusion of Murensky roof magma into Klamersburg, Union, and Mansbridge compartments in the northern sector. This is general, general stratigraphic column of Boston magnitude from lower critical zone to main zone. And we chose three uh, stratigraphic horizons from different compartments uh, from both limbs of the Bushfield complex for the purpose of our study. This is lower critical zone uh, boundary between lower and upper critical zone in elephant compartments in the northern sectors of the eastern loop. And you, can, um, you can see that the lower critical zone is pyroxene dominated, believed to have been formed by um, ultramafic type parental magma known as B1 or U type liquid, and uh, upper critical zone is phallostatic and suggested to be formed by an ultramafic or solutic type parental magma known as B2 or uh, A type. It is generally suggested that phallostatic cumulates uh, was built up by period series of multiple A types in intrusion. Subsequently, U type uh, magmas were intruded into the phallostatic mass. Well, I'm not going to define this view, but I would like to draw your attention that uh, the emplacement uh, mechanism of the U and A type magma might be much more complicated. This is UG1 chromatides, another point of interest for our study. Uh, in a compartment in the southern sectors of the eastern lane, the UG1 chromatides it sit uh, above a 15 meter package of electrolytic anatocytes and overlain by um, polyphenite. And finally, Marinsky unit in a compartment in the southern sector, but in the western lane. Um, Mansky unit is a package of uh, pyroxenides uh, hosted by phosphatic rocks of the upper critical zone. And there are normal pyroxenides uh, at the top of the, the unit, uh, most others. Uh, we call it hanging wall pyroxenide or normal pyroxenide thereafter. Mansky reef is a metasomatized part of uh, basal. Uh, Metasomatized basal part of this normal pyroxenite. And it is usually pegmatoidal and uh, phallostatic, but it's bounded by lower and upper uh, chromatized seams um, in an idealized section. We call it normal relief. These uh, chromatides are accompanied by a PG concentration, I can say, in most of the cases. And the upper chrom uh, chromatide seams is the most magnetic feature of the reef, in my view. At the same time, give us some, some clues in the petrogenetic uh, model. There are some, uh, fa uh, some facies along the strike known as wide reef and contact reef. And uh, in the contact reef, lower and upper, uh, uh, lower and upper reef are stacked up on each other um, and, but in wide reef, upper and lower reefs uh, have been separated from each other by normal pyroxenite, which make the species less economic for mines. Okay, let's start uh, with the Moransky unit. We took four drill cores uh, along the strike from the Royal Bafokin Platinum uh, Mine, uh, the compartment in the southern sector of, of the Western Lane, and I called them drill core one to four from right to left, north, east to southwest. These are the probe results from the autopyroxene and, and plagioclase cores. They're about 1,000 points analysis and so the one infection from all rock types in, in these four uh, reports. And uh, for the phallostatic cumulus, there are uh, more thematic variations in, in cumulus 
tragic things. There are fixed at 76 and 77 uh, bells across the stretch graphy and along the track. This may imply that we are dealing with a chemical homogeneous transpatic mash. But the pyroxene empty the number of the hanging wall normal pyroxenides are constant uh, along, along the track. They are about 70. Uh, uh, 79%. But there are relative difference of orthopyroxene MG number between the bastard drink and UG2 pyroxenides, which is about 80, 81%, but, and the mineralized grade is about 79%. This is consistent, in my view, with the older uh, but similar ages of bastard drink and, and UG2 units in respect to the mineralized grade, based on the study from Scopes. Uh, and call it 2021, which will imply that uh, the out of sequence fashion of replacement for the for the Lorenz unit. Also, please note that autopyroxin MG number is constant along the normal hanging one pyroxin itself, as shown by Schoon and Mitchell 2007, which may imply that uh, they were uh, the autopyroxin that came up as slides uh, to the shallow level channel. I would say that. These are all evidence of a single instantaneous uh, intrusion of slurry in the mush into the mush. So we suggest that we had a neurotic mush and then a pyroxenic cell uh, as an autopyroxen, chromatic slurry upon the neurotic mush and bisect to neurite into two separate portions. And, and this chromite um, probably segregated from the autopyroxen by kinetic signal. And the main theory, we suggest that it is an extraordinary separate event because none of the primary children models could explain the upper chromatide scene. The evidence presented here showed that both Moransky uh, or other pigmentation events, such as single risk horizons, uh, most probably formed by the injection of new melt into the mesh. Geochemical evidence and textual evidence both start with the geochemical evidence. First of all, reef pyroxenite is more primitive, about 80, 80, 82, the average of 81, than the normal pyroxenite, which is about uh, 7, 79. Secondly, as you can see, unlike the hanging wall and normal pyroxenite, there are variations uh, for autopyroxen engine number that become more primitive along the strike for post marine screens and also the single leaf when you go one to four, four from most east to south east. Next is the very uh, a large lateral systematic variation in A and content of the interstitial plagiarism about you know, 40, uh, 37 to 77 also uh, this is the same is true for uh, for the pseudo leaf and uh, the first piece of evidence can be the eleven for first strike person that become more primitive around the strike from uh, from these lines from seventy eight percent to eighty percent from north east to south west. And this is the comparison from two years first to olive. There are also some textual evidence includes paratectic olive or topiracin textures and also neoblasts with reverse is done at the boundary between two autopilots and uh, mega crisps. And finally, the rotation um, of autopilots and um, mega crisps. It looks that the melt responsible for the protective reaction of uh, these primary crisps and also finally the annual process from this um, and, and the melts that uh, these melts was produced in the neoblasts. And we suggest that a hot reactive probably involved melt intruded into the pyroxenic mush, rotated the autopyroxen grains, and passing through the porous uh, pyroxenic mush of the neoblasts. And the reason for the systematic uh, variation with, uh, that I talked about from the equal one to four. Uh, is that Greek one was closer uh, to a postulated feeder country, probably in northeast, in respect to the others. So, lots of the, uh, lots of the Greek one had more time to become more about in respect to uh, other Greek uh, distal from the feeder. This is a, petro a petrogenetic um, model we suggest. 
after the emplacement of the Hannibal normal parasitic mesh, there would be the formation uh, of the top and bottom leaf package by injection of a new melt into the base of the, the uh, parasitic mesh. And then there is the production of superheated hardened melts by magma mixing that enhance the animal neutrality between parasitic pegmatase. Um, I think of forming two um, chromatides at the upper and lower boundary of the field. And, and this pegmatite is known as normal reef caches. Farther from the pasteurated feeder in the northeast, the hydrodynamic pressure of the melt declines and a focused melt, and, um, a focused melt flow that we have here um, is produced vein like reef known as contact-free fascias that we talked about. Uh, at the contact free, the intruding melt infiltrate into the mesh and moves by percolation. Then the, there were intrusion of photopyxin slurries within the previous field by intra-accretion. And, and the intrusion inflated the entire mesh unit and the leaf, causing the pegmatoids to bisect and uh, partially, also partially disaggregated to produce blocks of pegmatoids and producing the vertical separated top and bottom reefs known as wide reef, proximal to the feeder. And um, so it's, uh, in mining operation, it is a not economic because the uh, top reef and bottom reef are very far from one another. Okay. Up until now, uh, I showed you the evidence of both intrusion of parasitic mush into forestatic mush followed by the intrusion of the melt into the base of the parasitic mesh in the rocks of the Mirensky units. We also shown that both intrusion of mesh and subsequently a pass of melt into the mesh will happen during the solidification of the lower boundary between the lower and upper critical and the last in the layer. So in the next following slide, I'm, I'm going to show you the possibility of two other emplacement mechanisms plus trivialent mixing to form UG1 um, traumatized. We suggest that this magma replacement side is necessary to produce a thick traumatized uh, layer such as uh, UG1 in the visual complex. I will then talk about the, the implication for the morph uh, morphology um, of the magmatic plumbing system. So let's get straight to the point. Two important uh, Puzzles on the origin of stratiform traumatites are first, non protective proportion of trauma occurrence from the phase equilibrium point of view, and two, the mass balance problem. We have worked on the UG1 traumatite at the Austria uh, in, in the East, uh, Eastern Union and showed that the melt length is a melt length is a necessity and sufficiency for such a thick bifurcating layer of traumatites. We tested and substantiated our suggestion with constraints from theoretical fluid mechanics, field evidence, and mass balance calculation. I'm, I'm not going to go to, through the details of, of the model here. What is important uh, here for us is that uh, we have the intrusion of magma to suspension currents into the melt. But what we suggest is a fixed volume of turbulent magmatic density current injected into the transient mass lens hosted uh, within the marsh. Mix, uh, mix with the, uh, with this melt to generate the separated trauma saturated hybrid melt, and the hybrid melt then injected trauma slurries to the back of the current when the current is moving, uh, moving forward, and concentrate trauma in a non-protective fashion to form a naturally sensitive trauma layer between between uh, the side. This is a photo from the western limb. Uh, uh, here we can see a small part of density points. I think UG1 contact probably uh, the kind of the frontal, frontal region that are arrested in action during the propagation stage. And uh, this is the photo shows the density current closing time at NG3 traumatite. This, this photo is from the western link, it suggests that magnetic density current can be operated. Uh, at other levels, but also at the other levels of the district complex. Implications, uh, okay, and the mass balance problem, we suggest that there is no need for a thick vertical column or a big tank of melt to produce one meter 
chromatite layer and magma can be processed along the strike uh, in the melt field part of the mass column. Assuming these parameters for one meter thick chromatite that extends for uh, 50 kilometers uh, along, along the strike in, 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 in the entire compartment, the magnetic density current uh, needed to travel for 100 kilometers along the strike and process column of magma with about uh, 350 meter thick, with a thickness of 350 meters. Uh, and um, inject back the, the, the chromite flies uh, to produce this one meter thick uh, traumatized. In summary, we suggest that this magma inflexion style is, a, is necessary to produce a thick chromatite layer such as UG1 in the bushrock complex. There will be no need for thick column of magma. Uh, a magma, magnetic density current uh, travels naturally from a feeder mixed within a mass lens and solve, uh, solve the problem with the chromium mass balance by processing the melt along the track. This is a paper published recently. If you're interested, you may find more details about uh, our model in the paper. Uh, but based on what explained, we suggest that for the combination of these magnetic processes, and such as mixing and contamination, and, and also the emplacement style uh, that we talked about, Construction of layered intrusion are not possible in my mind to, to be explained in the context of traditional media of big tank of melt. This is the conceptual model we suggest for a single compartment of, of the Rosenberg layered suit. It is composed of mesh with some transient melt lenses. This is similar uh, to the sheeted uh, seals model for the formation of layer gathered mid-ocean regions. And now we can better picture the climate system of the Rosenberg layer suit. This is, this is the western limb, it's the north, and uh, different compartments from the Mandeberg to the north, to Rosenberg to the south, separated by structural uplifts. And uh, also we had the rural buffet in mind as a new, a new compartment uh, uh, to the others. And, and we suggest that there is a deep staging chamber uh, here that serves the compartment by multiple feeders from north to south. And those processes in the staging chamber, such as traversing or, or even regressive contamination, and also proximity uh, to the feeder conveyed in the compartment could be the reason for some facial changes along the strike in different, in different compartments. So back to the beginning, we suggest that non-sequential magma injection and uh, mixing um, are important and indeed a valuable paradigm shift in our understanding the construction frequency of salty layered intrusion and uh, magmatic processes within. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's time for a question. If anyone has any question, I will be uh, here to answer. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening.